Hi, the next item we're going to make is the clasp and the central station for um, uh, your stringing. Now, it doesn't have to be, these were hand knotted on uh, silk, as you can see, but you could just as easily do it with your fine wires. So I've taken um, three of the jump rings out of the, um, dear me, brain, three, three jump rings out of the five jump ring kit. And I'm just going to, as I've done repeatedly with things um, today, because these are quite thick, I'm just going to anneal them to get the uh, stress and strain out of everything. If the wire's thinner than this, um, you don't actually have to do this, but it's just this is quite chunky wire, it's 2mm, and at this sort of size, it's a bit thick to um, try and manhandle when it's already had some work on it. Um, so I'm just going to pop those in the pickle, or throw them over the table, but ideally in the pickle, and I will be back to you. Okay, so these have been pickled and we're going to repeat what we've done every single time on any of the fusing so far we're just going to fuse the end of the jump rings and if i can light the torch it's as quick and simple as this is so we're watching for the flux to go blackly brown color and then the surface of the metal starts to change colour. It goes a much silver, silver, more silvery colour and looks wet. And you can see now it's just fusing. So we move on to the next one. I wonder how many jump rings I've fused on Jewelry Maker so far. Quite a few, I think. But it does no harm to see this repeatedly because you understand much more clearly. The more you do it, the more you understand how the metal moves there. See, it's just flowed on that one. And we'll do it on this one. Now, I may possibly have left a bit of a big gap in this one. I'm not sure. I think part of the jump ring was touching, so hopefully we'll be OK. And the metal's just coming up to temperature now. You can see the surface is changing. And it's just starting to flow. No, there wasn't too big a gap, so I'll just come round the other side. And then what I'm going to do, as usual, is I'm just going to flip them over just to make sure they've gone all the way through. Um, possibly without throwing them all the way around the room. Um, those look pretty good, but just to be on the safe side, I will give them a quick once over again, because that one actually there, I can still see a little bit of a line. So we'll just bring this back up to temperature never hurts to do this because it's, it's easier to, to rectify anything at this stage than it is if you get a split in the middle, metal, middle? split in the metal a bit further down the line. So that's flowed. This one I can't actually see a join at all, which makes me think it did fuse all the way through. But I will just heat it up just to be sure. I think it's there. It's great when you can't actually tell. I'm looking at this really closely and I can't tell where it is. So, just up to temperature and surface of the metal wet. And the same on this one, I think the join is there. And this isn't just being said for um, demonstration purposes, it is great when you can't see where the joint is. So again, it's just coming up to temperature, you can see it's looking wet, and there we go. So again, I'm just going to very quickly pop these in the pickle once the colour has gone out. And if there's anybody new watching at this stage, don't touch the metal till it's not red anymore because it is very brittle at this stage. The minute the colour goes out of it, you're fine. But um, when it's got colour in it, it's not a good idea to, to do it. Um, so I'm going to leave those in the pickle just for a couple of minutes and um, I'm going to show you what happens and it probably won't do it now. What happens if you touch the metal when it's red hot? This is just so that you understand it's not an idle warning. So I'm going to bring the whole of this jump ring. It's a shame really because I'm wasting a jump ring here. 
but um, I'm going to bring the whole of this metal up to temperature and get it to the bright red stage and then hopefully this will probably be I'll do the demonstration and it won't work but if that's the case then that's the joys of television isn't it okay so that is very hot and probably if we had this under the studio lights it would be glowing so if I touch it at this stage there exactly that's exactly what I wanted to happen in this instance you can see that the metal actually breaks now on a demo that I did earlier you will also have seen that there is still some possibility of being able to fuse it back together again um, it doesn't mean if you've broken it you can't use it if you're lucky and careful you can generally get these things back together again unless it's something very complicated so here are the jump rings that have come out of the pickle and just as a reminder what we're going to be making are a center station for the um, middle of your beads or pearls a clasp for the toggle and the toggle to go through it um, and what I've used is the 1.5 wire again out of the bow pendant kit and I've turned up some jump rings that actually a bit thicker than these I cheated I had some 1.5 wire but I've turned up some jump rings um, from that on the end of a pair of pliers and I'm just going to show you at this stage how to make the bobbles on the end for the toggle part of it so this is where you do need to be a little bit careful and what you're going to do is take the torch and hold the flame onto the end of some of the 1.5 wire and you're just focusing in on the end and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that what happens is that as the metal melts it balls up on the end um, so you can see that's how I've done the sections here so once this is cooled down and I'm just going to quench this you can cut it off to the the length that you think you would like your toggle um, and then ball the other end but do remember to hold it with the pliers because otherwise you will have very burnt fingers so I'm just really quickly going to show you um, how to shape the the, the sections here um, and this is actually quite fun I love doing this um, so all we're going to do turn the torch back on and heat and we're going to get this back up to the temperature that it fuses at And what you want to do this time is get the heat all over the um, item because what you're going to do is you're gradually going to ease the metal into a shape that you like. So I quite like that and I'm going to repeat that on each of these. So remember that what you've... Uh, why am I doing three? I'm trying to think why I've done three here. Um, I did only really need to do two, one for the centre part and one for the end. But if you're making up the necklace and you want to put extra stations on, then that's probably why I did it. So, um, again, work the metal and wherever you put the heat is where it will start to move. So, just one last demonstration, just so that you get an idea. And the more you heat it, the more it's going to shrink in on itself because in effect what it's doing is what we saw on the um, granulation it wants to suck back into being one homogenous piece of metal so you don't want it to do that completely but you do want to reshape it a little bit you could of course just do this um, very gently with a hammer and not bother doing this but I'm going to stick with those three and I'm now going to pickle those so I'll take a break okay so I've got the pieces out of the pickle now and I've also uh, balled up the other end of the wire and flattened it out 
and made some jump rings to go on to the various pieces and to save confusion because actually all we're supposed to be doing is the end piece and the center section i'm going to take one of these out and i think i'm going to take that one out so what we're then going to do is put the, the jump rings where you think you would like them locating onto the um item so that's going to be my center piece i think and you only need to put one onto the toggle and you also need one on the um part of the toggle that you're going to be using so those are the pieces that we're going to fuse and just to be sure i'm going to blob an extra piece of extra piece an extra drop of flux onto these so I have I had fused the jump rings closed in the interim and the jump rings I'd actually just made up using a pair of um, round pliers. So I'm going to fuse those into place. And the thing with this is actually make sure that you do heat up the whole of the um, larger piece as well first because what you don't want to do is have all the heat being sucked away so you're looking for that spread of metal on the jump ring and there and there and we'll do the same thing over here you can obviously use any size jump ring you choose or you make up they don't have to be this big I like doing it because I make a bit of a feature of them but it's entirely up to you and again, we're looking for the metal to spread and suck between the two so that we've got a good joint. And just one useful tip on this piece um, is, and I've probably not got those near enough. Oh no, they are sucking up, that's fine, there. Um, is that what you also can look to do is that when you've balled the one end of the toggle fitting, is it will if you put it down on the charcoal block it will ball up flat on the charcoal ball, ball block it doesn't have to be held in a pair of pliers so it means if you're doing short sections you're fine so you can now see um, without very much work we have the um, center section the toggle and the um, actual toggle to go into the section so that's a really easy way of making your own toggle clasps or sections to go into stringing that you're making like this so um and again if you use larger jump rings you get a larger finish uh, get a much larger one that was done with a larger jump ring um that was done with the small one i have actually textured the back of these because i was running out of polishing powder so um or polishing compound so that's been made with the same size jump rings um and i hammered the the ends of that one flat a little bit and textured the back so um there's lots of things you can start to do you could put granulation onto these they're just a really simple way if you've suddenly strung up something and you decided you haven't got it or you've discovered you haven't got a um the right ends or the something that you like for the ends make your own it's that easy Obviously, they need polishing and finishing. <laughs> 